Hi guys, I hope you're well today. I just want to take a few minutes of your time to share some words of encouragement. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says this, Always be joyful and never stop praying. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. There are three key areas that I want to pick up on quickly. The first one is about being joyful. I don't think being joyful is about my circumstances or feelings. And it shouldn't be dictated to by those two areas at all. If we focus on those scriptures again, we're being challenged that in all circumstances we should be joyful and thankful. I believe God is asking us to refocus our attention away from us and focus on him instead. Relying on him will lead us to a better place, will lead us to becoming content, happier and at peace even when we're faced with difficult situations. God doesn't want us to ignore our pains or struggles, I don't think. But it is about how we manage those that is so important. And if we do it in our own ways, well, hey, we're not perfect, we mess up. Joy is something that we can't manufacture, but it's something that can only come from God. And the good news is, once we have that joy, it doesn't go away. No one can take it away from us because it is not based on what we do, how we do it, but it is based on our relationship with God. And no one can interfere with your relationship with your God. Praying always, how do we do that? Some v versions say, pray without ceasing. I think it is important for us to know that if we want to develop our relationships with God or our relationship with God, we need to talk to him more. And praying is one way that we do that. In addition to reading the scriptures and being encouraged and challenged, challenged by our brothers and sisters. Praying without ceasing is about not stop, stopping praying rather than praying every second of the day. It is having a prayerful life and making it part of what we do day in, day out. It is a way that we get to know who God is, his character, his love, what his promises are and what his will is for us. Hebrews 13, 5 says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God is right there with us. But the more we talk to him, the more we get to get closer and the more that will help us to become more joyful. To be thankful is a little bit like being joyful and I think that these three areas are all interlinked. We cannot be thankful just for good things that are happening in our lives. Again, these verses are challenging us to be thankful even when things are tough, difficult, when you have a, a relationship issue or difficulty, when you are having a financial uh, situation in your life, when you don't have a job, when you're sad, when you're lonely, when you've lost someone. It's about saying, God, I know these things will happen but I trust that you have a better plan for me and I want to hand my situations to you and say, take them as they are and use them as you will. Because I know you're not limited by my feelings or circumstances. You can do anything. If you can use anyone or any situation, Lord, please use my own. And I trust that the right thing will come out of that. Once you've done that, you can be thankful, knowing that God would use your situation for the benefit of someone else or for the benefit of yourself. Psalms 46 says this to us, God is our strength and refuge, 
an ever-present help in trouble. What else do we want? What else do we need to be thankful? So today, make a list of good things that are happening in your life and make a list of bad things that are happening in your life. Once you've got those two, take them to God and reflect on 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Joyfulness, praying and thankfulness. And you will see how that will change your life for the better. Psalms 103 verse 2 says this, Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. I hope these words have been encouraging to you.